<laughs> so what are you guys? We're part of the Sparkwood family! Hey guys, our plan right now is to actually do a complete course on stats for psychology. Okay, so we did that intro video, the one where we talked about the normal curve, because it's absolutely essential. We're going to handle on that stuff before we look at Z-tests, T-tests, ANOVAs, all that sort of jazz. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, let's talk about some other fundamental topics before we get to, say, Z-tests. The okay. major topic that's going to come up is uh, sampling distribution and mean. But before we get to that, first let's talk briefly about measuring things. Okay, so if you want to do stats, you want to figure things out, we need to be able to measure things. And one thing we want to look at is typically, what does the average person look like? Whatever that's supposed to mean. Okay, so here are ideas about the average. And I put the average in quotes because I don't mean literally arithmetically the average. I mean average is an intuitive sense of just the average person on the street. Okay, so there are a couple ways to measure this. One is um, you get a bunch of different people. And you ask them something like, how many pounds of gummy bears do you eat per day? Okay, and they start giving you different answers. And you want to know, for the average person, how many pounds of gummy bears do they eat per day? Okay, so you want to go with that. Well, one way to do it is you literally take a bunch of people, you ask them how many pounds of gummy bears they eat per day, right? And you get numbers that look like this. So maybe like one pound, one pound, one pound, two pounds, three pounds, three pounds, three pounds, etc. Like this, okay? And maybe for another set of data, you get something that looks like this. One pound, two, 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 three. Like that, okay? All right, well, let's look at this set first because that might be more instructive. Okay, one way to look at this and go, what is the, how many pounds does the average person eat per day? Well, you look at these numbers and go, well, it must be two, right? It seems like a lot of people are eating two pounds per day. Okay, so if you did that, you look at the guy you see most often, and that's called the moon. That's the way of figuring out what the average is. Okay, but let's keep going. Maybe another way to do it would be something like this. What about in this case? Well, it's kind of weird because like, if there's more than one mode. One's a mode, and so is three, right? Okay. And, but if I want to get a sense of like, who's sort of the middle guy, right? Because this is kind of low, this is kind of high, what number is kind of in the middle? You could literally do that. You could literally be like, okay, low, then high, then low, then high, et cetera, and get to two, right? So to get that representative middle score, you literally pick the score in the middle, right? And that's called the median. And that's the number in the middle. And of course, the other thing you could do is literally take the average, which is you add up all the scores and divide by the number, okay? So that is gonna be the average, and we'll call that the mean, okay? So this is the traditional average. And that's where you add the scores up, and you divide by the number. Okay, so a couple technical points to talk about. One is, what about picking the median when you have something like this? So let's find the median here. It's the middle number, so low, high, high, oops, low, and now you can have a tie between these two, right? In that case, the median is actually the average of the two numbers here, the 2.5, okay? So it's interesting that when you have a set of scores like this, the median itself might not be one of those scores. Okay, so the mode is the most seen number, the median is the middle number, with this added thing here where we said basically, if you have two guys that both kind of tie for the middle in some sense, you take the average of the two, okay? And then the mean is literally the old school version of averaging, right? You add up all the scores, you divide by the number. Okay, so we're actually good here. I want to talk conceptually about some of the differences, and then we'll do uh, some pseudo mathy stuff with the mean. But first, what's nice about the mode? Well, what's nice about the mode is this. Here the mode is, of course, 2, right? Right. But I want to kind of visualize it more generally like this. Let's say you have a distribution that looks like this, where over here, you actually have the scores, like uh, 2 pounds of gummy bears, 5 pounds of gummy bears, 10 pounds of gummy bears, whatever, okay? And then over here, you have intuitively, the higher up you are here, the more people that eat that many pounds of gummy bears, okay? So I'm not being super formal right now, I'm just giving you a distribution that looks like this, okay? Now, if you're being really technical, you know, you'd have maybe a picture that looks like this, Okay, where you have scores where you eat one pound of gummy bears, two, three, four, five, and then here we can mark off literally the number of people that eat three pounds of gummy bears, the number of people that eat two pounds of gummy bears, etc. Okay, and that's basically what we're trying to convey with this picture. Okay, so now, what's the deal here? Well, if you look at the mode, the most often seen number is right there. Does everybody see that? But what happens if 
you get one figure C high score. Like most people eat two pounds of gummy bears per day, and there's someone that really loves gummy bears. They eat a uh, thousand pounds of gummy bears per day. That one score is way up here. It's an outlier. Outliers are guys that typically are very high or very low relative to everyone else. Okay, so do you agree though that even if you have one extra score, it doesn't really affect the mode? Because if a ton of people are eating this many pounds of gummy bears, right? Let's say it's two, and you add one person that eats a billion pounds of gummy bears, that's not really gonna affect the most often seen score. Does everybody see that? So in some sense, the mode isn't influenced so much by really high, really low scores. Okay. Does everybody agree the median here is definitely two? Now what if I added the score of 10,000? Still one, 10, 10,000, two, three, two, and two. Well, actually I should write it like this. Two and two. So the median still remains two. So because you're picking a number in the middle, adding one extra really low score, one extra really high score, doesn't influence the median that much either. So in some sense, these are both relatively resilient outliers. Okay, but what about this mean? Well, we'll see. Mathematically, the mean offers a lot of advantages. One disadvantage is the fact that when you're adding up a bunch of scores, and let's say the mean is right there, if you get that one outlier that's way high, right? But because you're adding it up with all the other scores and dividing by the number, that one outlier can really influence what's happening to the mean. It's like saying the average is two, but you get that one person that's like 10,000. That one 10,000 would yank the average up. So the mean can really be affected dramatically sometimes by outliers, okay? Um, we won't get into this too much, but for example, let's say the distribution looked like this. The mean, median, mode all basically line up in the same place. But do you agree that if I have that one exceptionally high score up here, the mode and the median stay basically in the same place? But that really high score, just mathematically, will lift the average. And because of that, it will shift the average to the right. Somebody agree? So, so sometimes in a distribution like this, when they talk about it, they'll say it's positively skewed because you pull the mean in a positive direction, right? Or they might say skewed to the right because you're dragging this to the right, okay? Uh, the way I used to teach this was, um, you know, it's like you have a little kid. It's not going to be the daredevil kid, so the kid's going to take the nicer slope down. So let's say like this. Right? And so if the kid slides to the right, it is skewed to the right, or positively skewed. Okay. No big deal. All right, but now, well, might as well cover this term since we introduced it. Here's our original distribution, roughly symmetric, and now we get one really low score. The mode and the median are not affected that much, but that one low score pulls down the mean like this. Now this so kid's not going to take the steep side, the kid's going to take the slow and steady side, right? So the kid will slide to the left, so this is skewed to the left or negatively skewed. Meaning that mean is dragged to the left, it's made more negative. Okay, so no big deal. All right, sorry, I'm doing this relatively quickly, but I'm assuming based on the response we got to that other video that most people are comfortable with this, I just want to make sure that uh, if you're not, at least when we start these videos, everybody will be on the same playing field, okay? Let's do something slightly more technical. So since we're going to want to do things quantitatively with numbers, uh, that mean is going to be really useful, okay? All right, uh, and let's start talking in terms of symbols, okay? So we know we're going to add up guys. So you add up the scores. So I'm going to write like this. So we're basically saying sum. So think sigma S for sum. Okay, so you're going to add up a bunch of guys. So now imagine you have a bunch of scores. Let's say score one up to score, it could be say score 10. So you have 10 different scores, and you lay out, you call the score number one, score number two, up to score number 10. Okay, if you made it more general, it doesn't have to be 1 to 10, right? You can have 20 scores, 100 scores, whatever. So we're going to say from score 1 up to score n. Okay? All right, so how am I going to write that? I'm going to say we're going to sum up all the scores. Let's write it like this. So we'll start getting used to this notation. As i goes from 1 to n, meaning starting from score number 1 up to score number n. We're going to add them all together. Okay? That's just equivalent to add up all the guys. Okay. But then, what do you want to do? To average, you divide by the number, right? But the number of guys is just 1 to n, so they're n guys. So you're going to divide by n. Okay. Okay. So this will be our first, you know, like, pseudo-official looking formula. And this is the way of computing the mean. Okay. All right, no big deal. Okay. Uh, for the moment, I also want to introduce one other idea. And that's the difference between a population, I think getting this out of the way right now will avoid lots of confusion in the future. Population versus sample. 
I mean, a lot of what we're going to do with all these tests involve samples. Because the idea is this. Imagine you have all the people in the U.S. Um, and so that's the population. Now, if you take every single person in the U.S. right now, and you can just ask them, how many pounds of gummy bears do you eat per day? And you added up all those answers, and you divide it by the number of people, you would actually get the real population average. Okay? So the population average, or mean. Population mean. Um, a lot of textbooks do it different ways. A lot of professors do it different ways. I'm just going to call that mu. Okay? This is the average for the population. How do you compute it? Well, you already know that. You literally add up all the scores in the population, and you divide by the total number of people in the population. Okay? And if you want to be technical, we'll say i goes from 1 up to n. Okay? Sometimes textbooks put a big ass in here, just to make a point that you're dealing with the entire population. No big deal. All right. But now, what about a sample? Well, that's ridiculous. You're not going to ask every person in the U.S., right? And you could probably get a pretty good idea of what a lot of people prefer, what they like, just based on taking, say, a thousand of them, okay, or something like that. So you don't want to pull every single person. You just want to take a sample. And you want to extrapolate it, figure out things about the population based on the sample. Does that make sense? So that's going to be our plan. So we're going to take a sample. Okay. And of course, a sample, let's say, um, let's say our sample only has 10 people. Okay. All right. But everything would be the same. I can compute the average from my sample, right? But the procedure would be the same. Take all the scores and add them up as I goes from one. I'm not going to say a little length for the size of my sample. And then divide by the number of people in the sample. It's the same thing mathematically. Does everybody agree? The only thing is conceptual. Here, this is the entire population. And here, this is just for the sample that I'm looking at. Okay. A lot of people call this x bar. Okay. And then here we represent the sample. And here we're denoting the sample mean. Okay. No big deal. I think it's just good to repeat this stuff. So you'll see me do it later. When you start talking about sampling distributions and all that, it really will come down to this fundamental idea of population versus sample. All right, so now, 